Olá e bem-vindo de volta pro meu podcast, All Things Brazilian Portuguese. Welcome back. Uh, this is Galilee Berman speaking, and this is episode 9 of this podcast series. And today we are going to be diving into a topic that is uh, extremely important in the Brazilian language, and that is the topic of word gender. So if you've never encountered this concept before, uh, then it might be kind of a hefty lesson. I assume, though, that most people who are at this level have probably already heard of this concept, and so I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm going to try to condense it down and make it easy to digest, but quite frankly, to this day, this is one of those things that still kind of trips me up in Portuguese from time to time, really more so than any other topic, I think. But let's get started, all right? So it works like this. All nouns and adjectives in Portuguese are assigned a gender, meaning that they're either defined as masculine or feminine. And so real quick, just a refresher in case it's escaping you. A noun is a person, place, object, or thing, and an adjective is an attribute that's used to modify or describe a noun. So to explain how a word can have a gender, it's really just best to describe it by looking at examples. So we're just going to jump right into that. In order to understand this concept properly, we have to first look at the definite article in English, the word the, T-H-E. Uh, the word the can actually be written in four different ways in Portuguese, and I'll list those now. You can say a, o, as, and os, and each one of those is a different way to say the, and each one of those forms actually tells us something about the word that's to follow it. So if the word the takes the form a, then we know that the preceding word is a singular feminine noun. For example, in English, the woman would be a mulher in Portuguese. But if the word the takes the form o, then we know that the preceding word is a singular masculine word. So an example in English would be the man. And in Portuguese, that's o homem, o. If the word the takes the form as, then we know that the preceding word is a plural feminine word. For example, in English, the women. In Portuguese, that's as mulheres. So it's the plural. And if the word the takes the form os, then we know that the preceding word is a plural masculine word. For example, in English, the men in Portuguese would be os homens. So you can see how o and a get an S tacked on the end when the following word is plural, as and os. So to really hit this concept home, I am going to reiterate this once more in further detail. Uh, the word woman in Portuguese is mulher, like I said, and on its own, without any context, it would be kind of impossible to know whether or not this word is masculine or feminine. I mean, obviously, barring the fact that we know that by, you know, a woman is a feminine concept by definition, <laughs> but we have to have some way to identify whether the Portuguese word mulher is classified as either masculine or feminine. And the way that we do that is by the definite article a, which in English translates to the word the, meaning that if we wanted to say the woman, we would say a mulher. And on that same token, if we wanted to say the man, we would say o homem, with the definite article o, meaning the in that context. So with that, we can establish the definite article the defines a word as either masculine or feminine, and also either plural or singular based on what form it takes, um, whether it's a, o, as, or os. So you might be thinking, okay, great, yeah, but not every word has the word the before it, right? And yeah, you'd be right. So how do we know if a word is masculine or feminine if there is no the preceding it? Well, for most nouns and adjectives that exist in Portuguese, you will find that the word ends in either an A or an O. And as you can imagine, if it ends in an A, it's generally a feminine word. And if it ends in an O, it's generally masculine. So I'm going to give you a few examples now. I'll say the English word first, then the Portuguese word, and then whether or not it is masculine or feminine. So the first word we look at is boy. In Portuguese, that's menino. And that's a masculine word. Uh, girl is menina, obviously feminine. Keyboard is teclado. So like the keyboard for your computer is a teclado, and that's masculine. Uh, cat, <laughs> it could be gato, is masculine. Uh, if you had a female cat, it would be called a gata, which would be the feminine version of the same word. Uh, table is mesa, and that's feminine. 
A book is libro, which is masculine. A shirt is camisa, which is feminine. Lamp could be lampada, which is feminine. And so it's true for, as I said, most nouns and adjectives, but there are a lot of other words that don't end in either an A or an O, and they can be a little more difficult to get right. Um, it can be thought that the majority of words in Portuguese by default are masculine. In order to achieve the feminine equivalent, we often just substitute the O on the ending of the word with an A or modify the ending of the word in some similar fashion. So, for example, the word cousin is primo in Portuguese, but that's a masculine version. To say that you have like a female cousin, the word would be prima, prima. So you have primo and prima. Uh, another word, cute. One of the ways the Portuguese say cute could be fofinho, like something is cute. Uh, to say that something is cute, if it's a feminine concept, you could say fofinha, fofinha. Tipo, ela é fofinha, she is cute. So another word is kind, like he's a kind person, is simpático. Simpático, you might remember that word when I was talking about the acute accent. For a female concept that is a kind person or a kind lady, a kind girl, you say simpática, right? And then caring, another adjective, is uh, cuidadoso. So, ele é um homem muito cuidadoso. He's a very caring man. Or, ela é uma mulher muito cuidadosa. You could say cuidadoso ou cuidadosa, depending on whether or not uh, you're referring to a masculine or a feminine concept. So, in Portuguese, there are many word endings that you will encounter that are not so simple as a and o. And sometimes they break the aforementioned rule of a and o, corresponding to masculine and feminine gender assignment. I'm going to take a moment to just... Uh, tell you all of the most common word endings that I've encountered uh, that you'll most likely see and typically whether or not they're masculine or feminine. Again, that's not always. It's just typically. So a word ending in ro, like R-O, typically will be masculine. An example is cachorro. That's a dog. And I'm saying cachorro because it has two R's on the end. And you'll remember that when you get double R's in a word, it makes a h sound. Uh, the next word ending we'll look at is ra, R-A. An example word in Portuguese could be a máscara, which means mask, and that's a feminine word. A-O with a tilde above the A, you get that um sound. A word would be a tradição, like the tradition, and those are typically feminine. A word ending in sonhos, that's C-O-E-S. The C has a cedilia and the O has a tilde. A word could be as agitações, which could be agitations. That is a feminine word. Words ending in ona, O-N-A, typically feminine. An example could be the word a zona, which is the zone. Another word ending is E-M-A, so ema. And a good word for that would be o problema, right? The problem. That's a masculine ending. The next one is ama, very similar. So an example word could be o programa, which is the program, and that's masculine. Words ending in ente or enchi is how you would pronounce it, E-N-T-E. -E. For example, the word for mind in Portuguese is amenchi, and that's a feminine word. Words ending in em are typically masculine. We got a word like o selvagem, which is wild. Selvagem, that ends E-M. A uh, word ending in O-R, typically masculine. An example could be O conductor, the conductor. Words ending in V-O, typically masculine. A uh, good word for that is O substantivo. Probably want to learn this word anyway. O substantivo literally means a noun. <laughs> so if you want to talk about the nouns in Portuguese, you're talking about the os substantivos. The other word ending we could look at is ista, I-S-T-A. A good example is o dentista, the dentist, and that's a masculine word. Next we'll look at efe, E-F-E. -E. An example could be o chefe, which is a boss, your boss, so o chefe. That's a masculine word. Next we have R-E, so re, or ri. A word could be a árvore which means the tree, and that's a feminine word. Next, we'll look at lo, L-O. An example word could be o crocodilo. 
a crocodile. <laughs> That's a masculine word. Uh, next, we'll look at ES. An example word could be os affluentes, os affluentes. Or you can say os affluentes with the more popular Brazilian accent. That means tributaries, and that's a masculine word. Next, we'll look at the ending G-O, and that makes the go sound. And a good word for that is o astrologo. So that means the astrologer, and that's a masculine word ending. Next is G-A, and a good word for that is a tartaruga, which means turtle. <laughs> and that's a feminine word, turtle, tartaruga. Uh, next, we'll look at C-H-O. Makes a sho sound. An example word could be obisho, which means the bug or the critter. Sort of like sometimes it talks about different types of animals depending on the context, but that's a masculine word. Next we'll look at Q-U-E. Makes the ke sound or ki. A word could be oshoki, which is the shock. That's a masculine word. Next we'll look at T-O. An example word could be o aeroporto, the airport. And that's a masculine word. Next, we'll look at D-E. That's a cidade is an example word. Cidade. That means city. Next, we'll look at D-A. We could say something like a assistida, which means the assisted. <laughs> kind of a strange example, but that'll work. Uh, next, we'll look at ca, C-A. An example word in Portuguese could be a kinetica which means kinetics. That's a feminine word. Uh, next, we'll look at F-O, and we have uh, masculine for that one. An example word could be o garfo, which means the fork, garfo. Next, we'll look at N-H-A. You'll see this ending sometimes, and it's usually a feminine ending. An example word could be a linha, which means the line. Similarly, we have N-H-O, uh, typically masculine. And an example word could be o cariño, which means the affection. Next, we'll look at ta, which is typically feminine. An example word could be a alta, which would mean like the tall alta, right? Ta. Uh, next, we'll just look at the a all by itself with a little tilde above it, so it's just sitting there. Kind of makes that uh sound, <laughs> like a nasally uh sound. Uh. An example word could be a irma which means sister, obviously feminine. Uh, the last one we'll look at is E-I-R-O. makes an ero sound, typically masculine. An example could be manufacturero, which could mean manufacture. And like I said, that's masculine. And so in order to truly understand how word gender is intertwined with every noun and adjective in Portuguese, you're going to need to become familiar with each of these word endings um, so it would behoove you to go back and listen to this podcast a couple of times, probably, because that was quite a lot of information. Um, but you'll need to be able to attribute either the definite article O or A to each word that ends with one of these word endings when you see them. Obviously, that will come with a lot of time and experience. I would not expect anybody to get this right away. Uh, it took me, obviously, years to be able to call upon this when I need to. Um, but for now, you know, it's best to simply see the word endings for what they are or listen to them as we just did, as you just did here, and continue onward because you could literally spend the next year of your life just studying all the different words that have these endings and like which words are masculine, which are feminine, and you're still not going to be 100% right 100% of the time. And so, <laughs> yeah, there's better ways to uh, utilize your time. Now, there are a number of other word endings that I haven't included here in this episode, and we'll discuss those in the upcoming lessons on verb conjugation. And Because if I were to include them here, I mean, that list would just keep growing and growing, and it was already quite a bit of information, so it's not necessarily where your focus should be at this particular moment. But what I am hoping to achieve here is to make sure that you have an active understanding now that each noun and adjective in Portuguese inherently is assigned a gender, either masculine or feminine. And it's identified by whether the definite article the preceding the word is either an o or an a or os or as, right? So before we conclude this episode, it's important that I make a distinction here because adjectives are assigned their gender based on the gender of the noun that they're attributed to. They don't technically have a gender all on their own. You might have already noticed that as we were going along, but I'll just kind of state it explicitly. So 
For example, if you were to say something like, my phone is red, the word for red would be the adjective that's modifying the noun phone, right? Meaning to say that it's applying an attribute to the noun phone, making it red. So therefore, in Portuguese, the adjective red would take on the gender of the noun phone. So that sentence in Portuguese would be, meu telefone é vermelho. The adjective vermelho, which means red in English, ends in an O, because the noun telefone, which means phone, is a masculine noun. So therefore, the adjective vermelho takes the masculine form in that sentence. If, on the other hand, you were to say something like, my bag is red, which in Portuguese would be minha bolsa é vermelha, you would see that the adjective vermelho becomes vermelha, ending in an A, because the word for bag in Portuguese, which is bolsa, is a feminine noun. So it's an important distinction to make the adjectives take on the gender of their corresponding nouns, because in order to sound like a native Brazilian, which is kind of the goal of this podcast, <laughs> you want to be able to describe things properly, and mixing up gender is something you should strive not to do whenever possible. Um, yeah. But again, don't worry about it too much right now, because you're going to see this again and again and again as we move forward. Um, so yeah. That does it for this particular episode. I hope you learned something useful. And in the next episode, we are going to discuss a topic uh, that I call finding context in the unknown. So definitely come back for that because you're sure to learn something interesting there too. Until next time.